What's happening, what's happening, what's happening? Of course, you know it's your boy, B-Hop Radio, shout in as always. I got my podcast partners off in this thing. Big Galaxy, Princess, what's happening? Woo-hoo. Man, I'm, I'm in the building, man, and you know what I'm saying? Uh... The OG finna tell you in a minute. Remember, I would say I'm the hardest rapper over 40. I got somebody that agrees with me. <laughs> no, today. I, he just didn't agree with yeah. you before the camera started. He talking about the size of the pants. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, we got a legend stepping off in the building. Bubba Sports, what's good? Hey, what you man? man, I'm happy to be here, man. man finally, 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 exactly. finally got in here, man. I'm, yes, I'm stoked, man. We happy to have y'all in this thing, Bubba. Now, I mean, Bubba. Talk I got me. to talk to you about the music, you know. I mean, Princess mm-hmm. and Wick, they gonna hit mm-hmm. you with the industry lingo and jargon, but I got a few songs I got to ask you about, man, and I'm gonna go straight into it. Man, My favorite everybody. one, that Claremont Lounge, sir. Claremont Lounge. Talk to me about y'all putting that banger man, together right Man, I'm gonna tell you, like, man, you know, all the, me and Rico Way, you know, and Organized Noise, just period, we, we made a lot of music, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And we put a lot of thought and a lot of effort into that music, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like all the bass, you know, getting to play in this bass line and, yeah. you know, these instruments, live, pl- all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to tell you, the most successful record, the biggest record, arguably, that we ever did together was Claremont Lounge. Mm-hmm. It took about seven minutes. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Break down you know? that studio session, um, man. So basically, I had, you know, I was seeing this chick, right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, <laughs> and, I was kind of trying to time it. I was supposed to hang out and meet her brother that night. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So I had been, we was actually like dating or whatever, but they was going to the Pink Pony. Yeah. Now see, I knew if I go to the Pink Pony, you know, too early, I'm going to end up sp- having to spend way too much money. You know what I'm saying? So I'm basically yeah. trying to finesse it and try to position myself where I get there at the perfect time to spend the minimal amount of money, <laughs> but still turn up and, and you know what I'm saying? Smart and still man. flex. <laughs> you know, because back then, it ain't like it is today. Back then, you know, you can spend, you spend two, three thousand dollars in the strip club. You you was epic. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Now you get laughed out of here. <laughs> but, um, so I, I just be chilling. But, um, yeah. but yeah, so that was, it was just, we was living in me and G-Rock. Yeah. Uh, Superstar Shawty. What up, G-Rock? From uh, Shamdan, The Connect. We were over there just, yeah. just vibing, man. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm finna meet this, I'm finna clear my lounge. You know, and then I had dropped my verse, and yeah. then Killer put his verse on there, and I, I had wanted to get Cool Breeze on, because I just always wanted to do a song with Cool Breeze. Yeah. Because he was, you know, low-key. Mm-hmm. Maybe my one of my favorite, if not my favorite, you know, first generation Dungeon Family member. So that's right. And that was the only song we ever got to rock together. But man, it it turned out dope, man. And it really connected a lot of dots for me, man. Mm. Like a lot of people that maybe didn't understand me, like in a certain way up until that point. In a, in a, in how I related to Atlanta, yeah. In, in the Dungeon Family, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It really kind of just was the icing on the uh, top of the cake for that that kind of deal. Being at Interscope at the time and jumping in between Organized Noise and Timberland, man. I mean, what was going through your mm. mind when you realized you had two production heavyweights putting man. projects together for you? Man, I wish I had them now. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, you know, because I always tell people, like, you know, I was I was talented when I first came in this thing, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I was green. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I really... I didn't know a lot, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Other than just I had some native ability. You know what I mean? And I was really blessed to work with some tremendously talented people. Mm -hmm. You know, from from Shannon Houchins, you know, from uh, 11th Hour, the production company I was signed to, Mm -hmm. to Reek, you know, to Timberland. I worked with Pharrell. A lot of people don't know this. Originally, Jimmy Iovine tried to, because, you know, he had his little formula. Mm -hmm. You know, he had figured out with Eminem and Dre that, that, you know, okay, you take the white boy because it was a different world at that time. You know what I'm saying? I was going to ask you about that. The (laughs) institution of the white rapper was really, like, pretty low at that time. Mm -hmm. It was pretty weak, you know what I'm saying, following, like, Vanilla Ice. You know what I'm saying? And I I, I messed with Vanilla Ice, man, and he sold 15 million albums. Somebody bought them records. Yeah, exactly. He was jamming, you know what I'm saying? So I ain't going to play revisionist history hater. But... uh, (laughs) But straight up, like, um, was it hard for you being a white boy trying to yeah. do your thing? That's what it's I like need to this, know. man. It's like this: certain doors you gonna get in just cause you white. Okay. Mm. And certain doors you can't never get in cause you white. Uh, that's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But overall, I don't do the "what was me white boy" thing. Like, yeah. I don't, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, it's it's definitely been more of a plus than a negative. But there have been a lot of negatives. You know what I'm saying? Especially for somebody like me, that I just love the music, man. Yeah. I came for the music, and as a result. 
I became endeared to the culture, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And and I am just truly indebted, you know, to hip hop music and culture, you know. Mm -hmm. Thank God for them black and brown people up in, in the Bronx, New York, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And I think that's something like, I don't know who else moving forward that's got the same skin color as me might neglect that little nugget right there, but I will not ever neglect it, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And, um, and that's just what it is. But, you know, originally, to take it back, because I have a, a, a issue with landing things sometimes, mm -hmm. but uh, Swiss Beats is who Jimmy Iovine tried to put me with first. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah, me yeah. and Swiss went in the studio, and it just... It was cool, but we just didn't like we didn't have that chemistry as people. Yeah, mm. and uh, and after that, I was like, organized noise. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because I had met Rico Wade in a show out yeah. in Athens, and I told you know I was kind of turned back in them days, and I was like, <laughs> I, white folks, white things. <laughs> <laughs> and, I was just trying to represent and let him know because they had told me somebody somewhere I got the notion that Rico Wade said white people shouldn't be doing hip hop or uh, and I but I never batted an eye at yeah. it. He gonna love me. Yeah. I'm real. You know what I'm saying? And exactly. so and so that was kind of my thing. And when I got a chance to, he was just holding the mic. And he, he put the mic in my face. I said, white folks, white things. He said, okay, black folks, black things. <laughs> <laughs> but, then I, but then I ran behind the stage after, because it was a, a Cool Breeze and Lil Will were opening up for 8-Ball and MJG in Athens. Yeah. But 8-Ball and MJG didn't show up. Mm -hmm. so, um, so I guess it was a little, you know, it was a little, um, little ruckus, you know what yeah. I'm saying, afterwards. But I got around there and I talked to Reek and I said, man, look, man, I just want you to know that, you know, I heard that you don't think you know white people should, but but I want to let you know that I'm a Georgia boy and, and I'm repping this shit for real. Who I am, true to who I am, and true to this state. Blah blah blah. And he was like, "Well, shit, we'll see you when you get there." Now, yeah. two years later, Jimmy Iovine calling his phone saying, <laughs> "I got this boy. I want you to work with because their deal, Organized Noise, had a huge label deal yeah. with Interscope mm -hmm. that had concluded, not necessarily on the best." terms yeah. right before I got there. Mm. So for me to say, Jimmy, will you put me back in with, with Rico? It was really like he didn't want to do it. You know what I'm uh, saying? But but I knew how important it was just from the, from my spirit, period. But mm. just what it would mean, you know what I'm saying, for a, a white boy to be stamped by the with dungeon, organized you know in Georgia. I mean, I used to lie to girls, man. I'm talking about like in high school. <laughs> in high school, a lot of girls be like, I'm the white boy in the dungeon family. Oh, <laughs> hey, but that's that's what I that's how I manifest, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, <laughs> boy, I might have told some girls anything back then. You know what it is? Like and my, it just you say it enough and I guess it just finally some stuff becomes true. I guess that's that's my take on fake it till you make it. Exactly. You know? Mm -hmm.